AMD's Radeon RX 6000 series is hugely popular and still offers great performance gains compared to the earlier GPUs and allows it to compete more directly with the NVIDIA RTX 30 series. Despite the fact that the RX 6000 series is still selling well, AMD is hard at work on the next-gen Radeon RX 7000 series behind closed doors. The release date of AMD's Radeon RX 7000 series draws closer and closer and we cannot be happier, most especially as the RDNA 3 is on its way. We can expect even more, given the fact that the NVIDIA RTX 4080 is set to be released on the 16th of November in 2022, about a month after the RTX 4090 and about two years after the launch of its predecessor, the RTX 3080, there is no better time for AMD to reveal its competitor as the flagship of this series. It is expected to compete with NVIDIA's next-gen GeForce RTX 4090 GPU. Hopes are high and speculations run endlessly on what AMD has in store. In our last video, we brought you up to speed on the specifications, performance, and benchmarks of the 7950 XT, which could potentially unseat the RTX 4090. While we expected that the RX 7900 XT graphics card would be the flagship of the series, AMD gave us all shocker as the high-end model of this series would be the RX 7900 XTX, better known as the RX 7950 XT. The AMD RDNA 3 GPU lineup will kick off first with the high-end offerings based on the Navi 31 MCM chip. The 7900 and 7950 XT are both built on the 5 nanometer process node and are based on the Navi 31 graphics processor that supports DirectX 12 Ultimate to ensure that all modern games will run on this card. According to recent information, the AMD Navi 31 GPU with RDNA 3 architecture is expected to offer a single GCD with 48 WGPs, 12 SAs, and 6 SEs, giving out a total of 12,288 SPs or stream processors. This is an increase of 2.4 times in cores compared to the 5,120 SPs featured in the Navi 21 GPU, with the GPU or the Navi 31 GCD set to measure 308mm squared, which will also carry 6 MCDs and will feature 16 megabytes of infinity cache per die. And during the time we all thought the 7900 would be the flagship, it was expected that it would feature up to 24 gigs of GDDR6 video memory, but since there was a change in plan, the GPU had its memory downgraded to 20 gigs with the 7950 featuring a full 32 gig GDDR6 video memory. With that said, there comes the question of which is better and which gives you more performance and value for your money. But don't worry, we have all the answers you need. 7900 and 7950 specifications. While both cards will use the MCM multi-chip packaging with the 5 nanometer process to manufacture GCD, AMD will make changes to the original structure, utilizing WGP as the main computing module and not the only original CU unit. Each WGP will house dual CU but with twice SIMD32 clusters as opposed to just two on each side within the CU within the RDNA 2. The 7900 XT will feature 42 WGPs or 10,752 cores and 5 MCDs with 80 megabytes of Infinia cache across 320-bit bus interface, which is about 12.5% fewer cores than the full fat variant. The 7950 which packs 15,360 string processors with Infinity cache of 512 megabytes and is equipped with 32 gigs of GDDR6 memory with a 384-bit bus with according to recent reports. As a result, the 7900 will only have 10 memory chips of the same capacity and speeds for a total of 20 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM compared to the 12 16 gbit GDDR6 memory chips running at 20 gigs for a total of 32 gigs of VRAM that the 7950 will feature. At a power consumption rate of up to 500 watts, the clock of the new flagship graphics card is said to reach 2.5 GHz providing 38.4 teraflops or FP32 computing performance, with a bandwidth of up to 960 GB per second, while the 7900 will feature a consumption rate of up to 350 watts, 2.5 GHz of boost clock, and a bandwidth of up to 800 gigs per second. RX 7900 and 7950 performance. The RDNA 3 GPU powered lineup is expected to offer a 3 times performance improvement over anything currently offered by existing RDNA 2 architecture, which will mean a step forward for the PC gaming as a current generation consoles are likely not to be refreshed within the next 5 to 6 years. 
The cards could also come with Display 2.1 support, enabling support for two 8K displays at 120Hz. And although these features for the DisplayPort 2.1 specifications are not known, we have a good feeling it will be markedly superior to the DisplayPort 1.4a offered by NVIDIA's 40 series cards. It is however speculated while the performance of the 7900 looks mighty impressive, with a gen over gen uplift of 2 times in raster workloads and over 2 times in ray trace games which means that the Radeon RX 7900 XT will perform roughly the same as the 4090 in rasterized titles it may likely lag in ray tracing. Even a 2x gain in RT won't be enough to match the RTX 4090 as its successor since the RTX 3090 is already up to twice as fast as the RX 6900 XT. On the other hand, if the 7950 XT has 15,360 stream processors clocked at 2.5GHz, making it 11% faster than the 6900 XT, and supplemented by 384 teraflops of affected FP32 compute horsepower, which is also a 67% improvement in computing over the 6900 XT, this will surely raise the expectations that the 7950 could beat the RTX 4090. The 7950 GPU will also feature a 200 watts higher TBP over the 6900 XT with a 500 watt TBP rating, and it's also an increase of 67% with the 7900 featuring a TBP of 350 watts. This puts it a little bit behind. With AMD confirming that performance per watt improvement is a big focus for the next gen Radeon cards, these upcoming RX 7000 series GPUs are expected to deliver a 50% increase in performance per watt compared to its current lineup thanks to the 5 nanometer process node and chiplet design, in line with the shifts in the first gen and second gen RDNA architecture. As we mentioned in the previous video, there haven't been any leaked benchmarks to confirm the theoretical performance of both GPUs. However, if AMD is successful at doubling the number of compute units and stream processors utilizing the chipset design ported from its CPUs, we can expect to see some big leaps in graphic performance and gamers can potentially expect to see a performance improvement of 250% with AMD's new RDNA 3 microarchitecture over RDNA 2. RX 7950 Pricing in previous years, AMD has tried to price its GPU range competitively in a bid to tempt consumers away from Nvidia, arguably the dominating force in the GPU market in recent years, and we expect no difference when both companies launch their next-gen lineups of GPUs. Additionally, AMD could also win the price war with its generation due to relatively cheap manufacturing costs of RDNA 3 graphics cards. However, based on comparison with the RX 6900 XT, which currently retails for about $900, the RX 7900 XT could cost as much as two grand. This would represent a 100% increase in pricing if this pricing information holds true, and with this, there's no telling what the price mark for the 7950 XT could be. Ultimately, it's still hard to say which one of these GPUs would give you the best performance as most details are leaks and speculations. But if we go with the current reports, it wouldn't hurt to say that the 7950 XT will be in a league of its own against others. And let's not forget that the Radeon RX 7000 series announcement is scheduled for November 3rd at the Together We Advance Gaming event, where AMD plans to reveal its next generation GPUs and will officially announce the specs, availability, and pricing of the RX 7000 series live on its YouTube channel at 4pm. There you have it, the 7900 versus 7950 XT. Which car do you think will be better, and are you going to pick one up, or are you going to set this one out? If you liked today's video, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below any other video ideas or topics that we should cover with this channel. If you did not like today's video, please leave a dislike, and comment down below why and what we can do better to make this channel a better channel. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.